PIMS is used in different industries like oil and gas, infrastructure, mining and renewables. In this session, we will talk about using PIMS document control on wind farm projects. Someone who has worked with developers, client companies and consultant contractors on building their document control architecture is Philip Davis from Lick Engineering. Philip has worked with the document control development since the early 80s within the oil and gas industry and over the past 10 years has worked more and more in the renewable sector. Philip, welcome. Hi, John. Can you briefly describe the main differences in project structure when setting up PIMS document control for wind farm projects compared to oil and gas uh, projects? Yeah, sure. Um, there are some tip particular features um, with offshore wind farm developments that you have to understand before starting. Offshore wind farm developments are primarily broken down into their major components, which are termed as packages the foundations, cables, the wind turbine generators, including or excluding the tower, and much, much more. For example, on a current project I'm working on, they've already identified over 20 packages. All these separate entities are joined together by interfaces. Uh, hopefully this sketch will um, show you a little bit of what I'm trying to describe. Let me share the uh, slide with you. Hopefully you can see it. A developer will source the contractor through experience and expertise uh, using a bidding process, a tender process. And then the packages that we've shown here are broken down to define the wind turbine package, the generator, the turbine generator, which the, the contractor would usually supply the blades, the generator, the tower and the flange connection right down to the transition piece known as a TP at the top of the foundation package. The foundation package is shown here as the next package. The foundation package would usually be supplied from steel fabricators producing the structure and the transition piece sits on top of the main monopile and is usually classified and designed as part of the foundation package together, but can often be supplied by a different contractor or fabricator. Foundation designs will vary also, uh, quite radically compared with the water depth and the geological uh, substance of the, um, of the foundation. We've shown a monopile here, but it could quite easily be a tripod or a jacket or even a suction bucket. These primary items all together are referred to as a singular position on a grid structure forming the overall farm layout. The power generated from the turbine is taken via array cables shown here to an offshore um, uh, substation known as an OSS or an ESP depending on which side of the Atlantic you're sitting. This gathers and may transform the power before it is sent to the shore via export cables. Of course, each package will involve design engineers and sub suppliers, but the field developer, the client, will usually choose to communicate only with a singular package contractor once the tendering rounds of the contract and the contractor is selected is over. But remember that PIM's uh, document control architecture, of course, can be aligned to service not only the client, but also the contractor. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, sounds good. And But uh, how about the connecting and interaction between uh, the different package contractors and suppliers? Yeah, as I said, the, these are just a few of the major packages. And you can see here that I've highlighted interfaces. Uh, these are primary, just a couple of interfaces where the cables meet with other cables coming down from the tower or into the um, subservice station. But there's several other interfaces, including the management of um, the uh, um, maintenance and operations, the installation, and all of these uh, need to be uh, managed uh, successfully and it can, of course, be managed most successfully by using um, the PIM suite as support modules. 
in even earlier stages of development, there could be a geo package involved. And this involves the geological survey of the whole area and the routes that the, um, the cable will take. Although not essential, ideally the DC package architecture should work with all the interfaces and this will enhance the efficiency of the whole document control operation for the project. But as with oil and gas, the tagging can be quite an important part of the construction and operational phase. Um, an understanding of the chosen tag methodology that the contractor and the client will use early in the project is essential. The renewable energy sector has primarily adopted a tax structure known as RDSPP, which stands for the Re Reference Designation System for Power Plants. Nice and easy to say. This is, uh, as you can hear in the description, come from the onshore power plant industry. For efficiency in planning and construction, as well as later in the operation and maintenance of the wind farm, it is necessary to structure the plant and assign clear codes to all the components. These codes can serve as a unique reference address during the engineering process or as a functional location to allocate specific maintenance tasks in the operation and maintenance systems, including the SCADA package. I show you here on the slide a reference document that may be worth familiarizing yourself with should your developer require the RDS PP coding incorporated in your project. Yes, so, so when setting up a new project, where do you start the document control process? Yeah, well, of course, it's always difficult to start, but we have to find somewhere. Of course, with any project at the start, it's extremely important important to cement reference terminology to the key metadata. Failing to do this will make it difficult, if not impossible, to change once established. The coding definition of the project name and package and contractors with identifying abbreviations, along with a listing of document codes, are the main metadata requirements to form the document identification syntax. Most clients and contractors are searching always to keep their document coding as short as possible, but shaving down key data more than these principal essentials can lead to lots of pro problems in defining and locating documentation through filtering later in the project. So try and stick to a minimum of this as uh, your syntax. Here's a typical document syntax breakdown that I've taken and tried to explain. You can see in this example, I've coded an imaginary project as Project X and given it a code PX. The package that we talked about earlier, I've chosen FOU for the foundation package. Described an author or originator of the document, again, an imaginary contractor, ABC contractors, abbreviated to ABC. And finally, a document type. Uh, and here I've used the NORSOC doc type standard, which most people seem to be taking and used an RP to represent a report. Of course, the sequencing number can be as long as the client requires and provision can always be added to make an extra uh, number at the end should the document be a, uh, a drawing that has more than one sheet number, as you can see here. Okay, thank you, Philip, for sharing your uh, knowledge and experience. And uh, if you want to know more about how PIMS can be utilized on wind farm projects, do not hesitate to, to contact us. Uh, and thank you for watching. And make sure to subscribe on our YouTube channel to, uh, to get updated on what's happening in the PIMS universe. Thank you. Thank you, Johnny. See you soon.